Pumice is a rather curious form of volcanic rock. The structure includes a great many cavities or holes which make the rock far lighter than we normally expect from such a piece of rock. So how is it actually formed and why does it have these gaps in it? Well, one of the keys to pumice formation is heat. Magma in the eruption is normally between 1000 and 1500 degrees centigrade. However, the temperature doesn't normally completely melt the rock or magma, turning it into a complete liquid. Instead, when it's underground, parts of the rock are melted and softened so it flows past the other softened but still solid grains of rock. And the deeper this softening of the rock happens, the more chance there is that the magma weight makes its way to the surface, that the grains of rock will collide with each other, mixing with the more molten rock. So the deeper this formation tends to result, and greater amounts of dust or ash being thrown up as the volcano erupts. And the magmas closer to the surface tend to get larger rocks formed as a result. And that explains the next key for the formation of pumice, which is pressure. Not all volcanic eruptions are the same. Sometimes the lava gently flows down the side of a volcano. Sometimes it throws ash and rock high up into the air. Generally, the greater the pressure that builds up inside the volcano, the more energy it's generated and the higher things are thrown when the pressure is released. So where does this pressure come from? It leads us to the third key. Different types of rock have different melting points and different densities. As these rocks move around within the volcano, the lighter rocks tend to rise to the surface. Now, these rocks themselves also contain things like water and carbon dioxide and other substances, which, when released from the rocks, increases the pressure within the magma chamber. The more of these substances the rocks contain, the greater the pressure is likely to build up. So in the formation of pumice, you have rocks that contain large proportions of water and carbon dioxide. The rocks are also under significant pressure and ejected with some force. And the magma that forms these rocks are generally fairly shallow, allowing larger lumps of rock still to be present. And once these rocks make it into the air harbour, the pressure is now significantly reduced. Clouds all the remaining gases and water trapped within the rocks almost immediately to boil off. This escape of gases and water at the same time cools the rocks very quickly and they solidify with a great many holes of different sizes inside the structure of the rock itself. The resultant pumice stone is far lighter than normal expect rocks to be. In fact, rock, pumice rocks can actually float on water, at least for a time before it becomes waterlogged. Now, the majority of volcanoes are found either on islands or in coastal areas. It means that the pumice is often found in, in and around ocean areas. A fresh pumice can also form a raft of rock on the ocean surface. But whilst to me, these, most of these are fairly small, some, during a fairly major eruption, could create a raft of rock of an area of hundreds of square miles or even more. This raft of rock, since it's rich in minerals, could then become home to plants and small animals. The raft then could be moved by ocean currents and drift from island to island, or even from one continent to another, assisting in migrating life from one location to another. So that's pumice. More than just a volcanic rock with holes in it, it may actually be responsible for spreading the diversity of life around the world.